So we planted trees all around our property. Now this is about three acres of farmland, just a little bit less than three acres where this chicken house of ours is. We've just built this chicken house over here recently and we have birds on the inside there. They're about six weeks old. Met six weeks yesterday and we're going to get inside and take a look at them. Now if you take a look at our chicken house over there, it's a bit isolated and I don't like it. There's no trees around. In fact, if you take a look at the entire property, there's barely any trees. We just have these kinds of short trees. They're almost like shrubs, just like this one over here. And it's a bit taller. Again, they're very scattered like that. In this direction there's almost nothing and a plantation over there. Now if you look at what my neighbor did right there, you can see the kinds of trees that he has. Very tall trees. Now of course having my chicken house over here isolated like that is not a very wise idea. Because despite the fact that we've tried to make the foundation as strong as possible, the winds can get strong. Once in a while they get really strong. And that means that the chicken house is actually open to attack from very strong winds. So one of the first things that we decided to do was to plant trees. So we decided to plant loads and loads of trees along the entire boundary of the farm. This is a tree called Grevelia. It's a bit of a water resistant tree, yeah? So I tried to plant it along the entire perimeter. Uh, we have another one right here. Okay. I tried to space them out about three meters. I have one here that's a bit drying up. I think it had dried up and it's just starting to regerminate. I hope it's not in the process of drying up and it's in the process of, of coming up again. Now I've planted over 200 of them along the entire perimeter of the property. Maybe about 250 trees. Now of course the trees are very tiny right now. It's certainly less than two months since they were planted. They were planted at about the same time when we brought the chicks in. So maybe they're about six weeks old. But in a very short time, in a few years, before you know it, there'll be big trees just like those that you see in the background. Actually, they are that exact variety of trees. So they're going to become really big trees and they'll create a shade over here. And you know what that's called? That's called planning. You see, I could decide and leave that for another day. I could decide and say that, hey, the trees take really long to grow. I'll just plant them another day. Whether I plant them today or three days from now, it doesn't matter. But doing something right now is the most important thing that you can actually do starting now and that's the main reason that stops people from succeeding but then there's people who actually do start and when they start they end up failing why is it that most people fail i'll give you a statistic that i find very interesting 95 percent of small businesses fail within their first five years of business and of those that remain 95 percent will not be present after five years what that means is that only 2.5 percent or even less of small businesses that start will be present 10 years from the point of starting. Why the hell does that happen? Interestingly, for farmers, it's mainly because most farmers don't think about their farms as businesses. They think about them as farms. I've visited loads and loads and loads of farmers and I won't tell you the number of things that I find in their farms that I just can't believe. They never think about them as farms. It feels like a hobby to them. It's time to feed the birds. Time to feed the birds. So let's get in. It's afternoon and um, of course the birds do have their food since they have just been brooding. And at this point we need to make sure that we don't measure for them food, yeah? You don't measure for the birds food. And they are not used to the sight of my green overall. You see my green overall? The people over there, the guy who is working, puts on a blue overall. And I'm putting on a green overall. So they are a bit startled. You see them running to the corners. But hey guys, take a look at this. They are six weeks old. Like I said, today they made six weeks old. Today they made six weeks old. And of course, we are feeding them. We are still using these pan feeders, which is actually not a nice idea. I'll show you why. Take a look at that. This is wasted feed. This is wasted feed. And this is what's going to happen around all the pan feeders, you see? If you take a look at this, feed down. Take a look at that, feed down. Take a look at the next one you'll see feed down, yeah? So this is wasted feed, and that's not a good idea. Now, of course, we also have the bigger feeders. These are the feeders that they should be using. But under, you notice that there is no feed. I'll pull it away. There's no wasted feed. So that's the first most important thing of having such kinds of feeders, yeah? Proper feeders, not pan feeders over here. So they are scattered all over here, and inside here we have the total number of birds that we have. That's about 2,500 birds over here. Well, more than that, but my target is 2,500, so that's the number that I keep referencing. Right here you can see our drinker system, and the drinkers are still up. We still don't have the pipes connected for water, so we are still using chick drinkers. But that's not a very good idea 
because the water gets dirty. Yeah? Because of the height of the drinkers, we try to raise them with bricks. But the water gets a bit dirty still. But that's temporary. That is stopping today. So it is week six and the birds are growing perfectly well. They are on target for the weights and that's the most important thing. They are consuming their food very well. We haven't had any breakout of an illness on the farm. And you see, on the farm, as the birds get older, the less illnesses you have, the better. So if by week six, we don't have any illnesses, we haven't gotten any illnesses, the birds are healthy, that means they'll have their target weights as expected. And that means by week 18, we expect our very first egg. We might even get it earlier, since the birds are even a bit above their target weight, which is something very rare. It is very, very, very rare. That I actually move through farmers and find farmers where the birds are on target weight or even higher than target weight. Most of them will be below target weight and it's because of small mistakes that people make, you know, farmers make. It starts from things like that, poor management of the birds because how do you expect to be successful as a farmer to actually start making money? You see, most farmers actually get out of business. Most people who do farming do get out of business. Why? Because they don't understand what they are doing. They don't know where to put the attention. They don't plan. They just don't know what to do. And hey, that's the purpose of Farm Up. That's why we are here as a YouTube channel. That's why we are here as a company, you know, to ensure that number one, farmers outside there understand what they are doing. That's why I spend loads and loads of days coming to YouTube, teaching you guys about farming, help you understand what you need to do in order to actually become a successful farmer. So it is things like this, you know, making sure that you do what you're supposed to do, not being complacent. Also making sure that the farmers have the right type of birds because it doesn't matter how much effort you put in, without the correct kind of birds, without the correct species of birds, the birds are actually going to die, they won't grow up, they're going to be sickly. Even if you give them lots of feed, they won't give you what you need. So hey, these are our own farm up chicks, bred by me, you know, bred by us at, at, at the breeder farm. And they're doing really well, I know that, you know, I can see it. Very soon we are going to be debiking them because they are on target weight. And so you can see that these feeders and the pan feeders are both present. And the main reason is because we have all the birds still on the lower floor. We don't have any birds on the upper floor. That's supposed to be the upper floor. All the birds are on the lower floor. So if we took away the pan feeders, we wouldn't have enough feeders to ensure that all the birds can access the feeds very easily. We have our feeders, adult feeders, present, but these will only suffice for about 1,300 birds, yeah? They won't suffice for the entire structure. So we need to make sure that we install that for the top floor, which we're actually going to do very soon. And also we need to connect the water for the tank. And uh, let's move outside and I'll show you where we're going to be putting our tank. So at two points, one up there, you can see a pipe sticking out, sticking out from the top floor. And the second is this, this. This is the second pipe sticking out. These are the two pipes that are going to be delivering water to the inside of the building. And right here, right down here, where you can see that they planted some maize recently. We're going to be putting our metallic tank stand that's going to be taking water into the chicken houses over there. So of course we want it to move using gravity to the inside of the chicken houses. That's why we need to make sure that the tanks are raised and they're going to stand right here. And that stand is being worked on at the moment. Tomorrow, they should be being delivered right here and then installed, yeah? So after tomorrow, we should not have an excuse of uh, the automatic drinkers not functioning. So all the tiny font drinkers that are on the inside of the chicken house are going to be removed. And what that also means is that the top floor is also going now to be utilized for the birds, yeah? So we're going to put litter on the inside, the entire top floor, we're going to put litter. We are going to install the feeders and the drinkers. And that means we're going to divide the house. Half of the birds at the bottom are going to move to the top. And that's going to be very advantageous because that's certainly going to mean that we're going to decongest the birds and the feed wastage is going to decrease, if not reduced to zero. Because using the other feeders, the birds, there's literally no spillage, yeah? But if the feeders are on the floor, like I've shown you guys, the birds scratch inside the feeders. And the birds are very selective eaters. Chickens are very selective eaters. They are very intelligent, yeah? They pick out what they want and what they don't want, well, they their preferences, you know, just like human beings have tests and preferences. If I gave you a plate of food, there are things that you would pick out and the rest you would eat later on. You know, you start with your favorite, something with the birds. But for the birds, we want to make sure that they eat everything because different parts of the feed contain different nutrients. The powdery bit will contain the minerals, it will contain the calcium, it will contain the vitamins. 
then the grain will contain the maize maybe the soya which is the protein source the maize being the energy source but birds naturally prefer, prefer the grainy bit so that's what they're going to pick out first yeah and then with time as you keep coming to replace the feed you're going to throw away the dusty bit and then that means they're not going to be taking that in so you need to make sure that the all the food is consumed so we're going to do that for both the bottom and the top floor so really by the end of tomorrow we shouldn't have this problem of uh, feed being wasted and also the water getting dirty because we're going to be using the more automated drinkers and those can be raised to whatever we level we have you know to the level of the back of the birds and that ensures that we have as little water spillage as possible and you see it is small things like this yeah you know i'm sharing it over here and you guys are learning but interestingly a lot of people don't implement them they don't know about these things they choose not to do it as a business you know as long as the chickens are feeding as long as you know the chickens are drinking water the rest doesn't matter to them the devil is in those tiny simple details you know that's why you mess up in the tiny details and that's why most people actually fail so if you treat it like a business and understand that every tiny nitty-gritty actually adds up to ensure that there is a final end and that the results are good then you're going to be successful you're certainly going to be successful yeah so this is just the beginning for us yeah in in a few months time maybe two months or so we're going to be building another chicken house over here exactly the same kind of chicken house and then soon we'll have two more so there'll be four chicken houses in total and this will ensure that we have ten thousand birds over here maybe about seven thousand five hundred in production at any one time i think that will be a success that will be a very successful project and i'm very very excited about it don't forget to hit the subscribe button smash the notification bell that way you never miss out on an upload. Lots of love. Bye.